exam. Bueno, pues, muchas gracias, Jorge. Muchas gracias. Thank you, Jorge. I want to thank everybody at LACNIC and everybody here in the audience. And as he said, uh, we are going to, in telegeography, we're going to give you uh, an overview of the trends in uh, Latin America. And we are using our latest data. So, starting. Yes, uh, I'm a bit short, but uh, that's okay. <clears throat> so, starting with the uh, demand, um, there has been an, uh, a significant increase in recent years, and this is partly because of the pandemic that created an immediate need for the internet, for internet in the world. But we, but it's also due to the increase of digital infrastructure in our region. So if we uh, look at the future, uh, 2025 onward, I think that we're going to see a significant growth of broadband, even uh, of, uh, even if it's uh, bandwidth, uh, even if not at the same pace as in the recent years. So here I wanted to go on with this, but focusing comparing Latin America and other regions in the planet. So to your left, in the left chart, you see that Latin America is more or less at the same level as Asia or the Middle East and over more advanced regions, including Europe or the United States. In the other chart, uh, um, in the future, Africa will continue to prevail in growth, but Latin America will be doing quite right. So we are going to be a bit over the global average with a, a very significant uh, growth rate. So where does this demand come from? I imagine that for many of you this is absolutely no surprise, but most bandwidth in Latin America is connected directly to the United States. So if we have a look at the international routes, we see that seven out of the ten largest routes in the region connect directly to the United States. And to continue with this point, let me show you here how Latin America compares with other regions in the world. What we can see here is that we are strongly dependent on connections with the United States compared to other regions. If we look at Oceania or Asia, we see that in the past 10 years, there has been quite a significant drop in the bandwidth that is connected to the United States. And if we look or if we focus on Latin America over here, we see that little by little, this is dropping. And I think this is probably due to the increase in regional hubs and digital infrastructure that you have in Sao Paulo and Santiago. So looking into the towards the future for 2024, I think these hubs will continue to increase or also as a result of the emergence of other hubs and the bandwidth connected to United States will continue to drop. So who is responsible for this demand? At Telegeography, we divide this into four different groups, which you can see over here. The first group are the content providers. We have Meta, we have Google, we have Amazon. The second group are the ISPs, where you have all the carriers that you are familiar with. The third group are the research and educational networks. And the fourth group are the enterprises. From what we can see here, we have quite an interesting situation in Latin America. The majority of the bandwidth comes from the ISPs and not from the content providers. So if we compare this with Asia and Trans-Pacific, the transatlantic regions, we see that in these cases, the vast majority of the bandwidth comes from the content providers. What we cannot see here in the graph are the growth rates in Latin America. We now see that the content providers are growing far more rapidly compared to the ISPs. This shows that in the future, it is likely that the vast majority of the bandwidth 
comes from the content providers and not from the ISPs. So going on to the topic of submarine cables, here I show a map with the cables in the region. We can see that there is a lot of movement in the Caribbean region in Central America and on the Atlantic in general terms and on the other coast and the Pacific. To tell the truth, we don't see so many cables planned for the coming years. These cables are necessary not only to respond to the demand or to the growing demand, because they also some of the older cables in the region have to be replaced. So in general, cables have a lifespan of about 25 years. So here I included a list of the cables that have been active since 2002. So in the coming five to 10 years, we expect that a share of these cables will longer be active. And because building a cable takes quite a long time, I think it's important to start and think how we'll be go about replacing these systems in the region. So going back to the topic of cables, let us speak about the cloud and the data centers. Like we said previously, we have seen a significant growth in the region. And we have Brazil, Chile, and Mexico as leaders. But as we can see, there is infrastructure in other countries, such as Colombia, Peru, and Argentina. And going back to the demand, and with more data centers in the region, we'll see an increase in broad with uh, broadband between Latin American countries. So now let us focus on the on ramps. Sao Paulo leads in the region with a number of on ramps of more than 20, and we see other cities in the region like Rio and Campinas. They are from Brazil. And another key point is that there are not that many countries in the region that offer on ramps. So if you are in Paraguay, or in Uruguay, it would be of key importance to connect with some of these regional hubs that offer services such as these. Now, in terms of cloud zones, Brazil leads with more than twice uh, the, of that in Chile. But I wanted to refer to the role of the Chinese companies. This graph shows that Huawei offers cloud zones not only in Brazil, in Chile, in Mexico, and Peru. In terms of cloud regions, we see that Huawei is at the same level as Oracle regarding the amount in Latin America. So when we speak of the cloud development in Latin America, it is very important to bear in mind the role played by these Chinese companies. And to close my section, of the presentation. This is a new toy we have at Telegeography. This is what we call the market connectivity score. The idea is to create an index with these nine factors using our data plus some of the public information to create a tool where you can compare hubs worldwide. So here I show the three major hubs for the regions. In yellow, we see Sao Paulo, Santiago, and Bogota. And to follow this example, I want to compare directly Sao Paulo and Santiago. So I can use this tool and select these two cities. And I have a graph that looks like this. So visually, I can see that in terms of data centers and in terms of cloud, the two are very similar. But in the case of pricing, Sao Paulo is a bit better than Santiago. And I can continue the analysis, including other cities, to see how they compare in these different categories. So hopefully, with this example, you can see what we're trying to do here. The idea is that this tool not only allows you to compare things like I'm showing you now, but also to look into the future using our projections in telegeography. So having said that, I close my part of the presentation. I give the floor to Peter, who will be speaking about pricing. 
All right, let's see how this works now. I want to speak about pricing because this is important regarding what is happening with the transactions, but also because this has to do with the market dynamics in Latin America. So let us travel along this process. Let's see if you can understand the references. But where in the world are the pricing data in telegeography? So we start with the bit bandits. I said that I'm going to change things in my presentation. So they stole the spectrum of light, but thankfully they are not well organized and they keep dropping telegeography pricing data. So let's see how price, pricing in the market behaves. In the case of transport pricing, we had evidence that is a 21% drop. What does this mean? So they're saying that there is a lot of competition here. So it would be very difficult to discover just any bit number, any person. So this is the tra road between Miami and Sao Paulo for transport. So we see that with this data, we can understand that for 100 gigabytes between Miami and Sao Paulo, between 2021 and 2024, the typical price of the weighted median dropped 21% over that period. Today, we see that 14,000 for 100 gigabit in Miami and Sao Paulo is a typical price. Others are more expensive and others are far cheaper. But 14,000 today is more or less the normal price. But this will change and we say that prices are always dropping and when there is more competition in the markets, particularly in the major route, the relationship is very strong and you have systems that are going to be going to operate in uh, uh, briefly uh, 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 soon there is a stronger pressure to decrease prices a further evidence of these bandits is twelve thousand seven hundred dollars they say that maybe google should have the answer that we're looking for so this means that we're going to go to Santiago, the route between Buenos Aires and Santiago. This is a route that is not in our map here. To your left, we have a submarine cable map. There's also uh, land uh, connectivity to connect uh, the two coasts, uh, the Atlantic and the Pacific. And based on our data, that route is interesting to understand uh, the interregional interconnectivity uh, that uh, goes from one country to the other, but within the same continent. Uh, for uh, 100 gigas to Buenos Aires and Santiago, 2,000 is a typical price, but there's a lot of variation. There are some examples that are much more expensive, but most of them tend to be cheaper, which means that there's a more and more uh, competition uh, and uh, sales, uh, and maybe in future years, we'll have more action in uh, this market, connecting the two coasts with the Google Cloud and other regions that uh, provide connectivity. Because we have seen, as was mentioned here, that uh, in Latin America, connectivity is extremely important, and it's growing in different ways. And that connectivity needs to be there to support these changes. And IP transit, $2. They're traveling quite fast. And now they're saying that it pays to be a good neighbor with $2. What does that mean? Well, that if we go to Paraguay here, we've seen that the connectivity of IP transit is relatively dominated by a Brazilian connectivity in Argentina, a bit of Chile and Bolivia, but especially Brazil and then Argentina. And so uh, 10 giga in, uh, in Asuncion, we've seen that a typical price is $2. If you compare that with markets like San Sao Paulo, Bogota, 
Buenos Aires, it seems expensive, but if you compare it to Asunción three or four years ago, it's extremely inexpensive. And we've seen it that prices are dropping because there's more investment, more competition. And that's what happens in many uh, places where there is competition. The um, um, uh, it, uh, the prices drop. In Sao Paulo, four or five years ago, um, it used to be much more expensive, like $2, and now it's 31 cents, depending on the contract, etc. But we've seen that there's more. there are more IXPs in Asuncion. Now there's one in Ciudad del Este, so the Paraguayan market is changing, and we've seen that prices that historically were extremely expensive, five, six, eight times as expensive as in Brazil. Today, they're a bit lower. They're still more expensive than neighboring countries, but the difference between the prices has been reduced because of the situation, because there's more investment, more demand, and more infrastructure. I think this was the last Let's see what will happen in 2029. We're going to travel to the future. And people are saying that, well, I hope my mortgage will be paid by then. And that's a reference to our data of our provisions, uh, what we anticipate the prices will be for IP. And here we see several regions in the world. And here, two, 10 giga and the typical prices that we've seen here. We see, as usual, or as almost uh, as always, the, there have been erosions in the prices, but to what, ex to what extent it varies in Latin America. And we are probably going to see the, the same thing happen in the five or six forthcoming years. And based on our data, up to 2029, there was a rate of about 18, 19 percent uh, variation rate. But there are many factors to, to, if we want to predict what the price will be in 2028, 29. But it, usually, it makes sense to us because of several factors. Connectivity in Latin America means a lot. But also, the most important thing as well, it's it's important to see what will happen in the next 10 years. So the two sides work uh, together, but it's impossible to know what the inter, uh, uh, what typically Miami is important for any market in Latin America. So we need to uh, the the bandits have been found in the International Court of Justice. Well. Thank you for everything. If you have any questions, here we are to answer them. Thank you. Hola. Hello, Thomas Lynch. You, we always the talk of price erosion. Is the are we going to reach a time when um, uh, Omega will be will cost one cent? Well, if I knew the answer, I wouldn't tell you. But but what you can do is to see what happened in the past, because typically what happens is that there's a floor for prices, hypothetically. But uh, for instance, from 10 to 100, uh, so it's usually when we reach that point. And then uh, if we have a, a stronger demand, well, is there a demand for cent fractions? But so uh, to a certain extent, well, Mathematically, that would be possible. But if we think of the scale, well, the answer is we'll never reach that point when everybody will pay the same price, but we'll see a situation of infrastructure that is different. Thank you.
Hello. Giordano Morel of Dominican Republic. I just have a suggestion. Every time I come to the events uh, of, uh, uh, and I hear you speak, uh, I know that you focus on the largest markets, Argentina, Sao Paulo, Brazil. Now, it would be good to add information of the Caribbean. We can also help you with that because we are Dominican Republic uh, providers. So I suggest adding information on the Caribbean transit and transport because there are very few players. So it's good to know how things are being handled in other islands. Well, yes. I wanted to say that the Caribbean matters, and we know a lot about the Caribbean, but the dynamics of each country are different. And uh, so we can discuss it, yes. But of course, to discuss Sao Paulo or Rio, it's uh, quite different uh, from uh, Santo Domingo. Yes, I'm saying it because if you are negotiating, or you may say, well, in Sao Paulo, Sao Paulo is down there in the south. It's a different thing. Sure. Well, I want to thank Juan and Peter. This presentation is one of the most uh, eagerly expected uh, at LACNOG. So with this, we would close the first day of LACNOG. Thank you all for coming, and we'll meet again tomorrow at 9. Those of you who participate in the hackathon of Mi Laknik, if you want to participate or ask questions, and at 10, we have the public policy forum. So enjoy your Tuesday evening and see you tomorrow.